Sound of Freedom is a huge success, making millions upon millions of dollars in profit, but there's a problem. Three different parties are claiming to have the exclusive rights to a sequel. How did this happen, and what's going to happen next? Sound of Freedom has a major problem right now. The movie was one of the biggest hits of the summer. On a $14 million budget, the movie grossed nearly $180 million at the global box office. With so much money to be made, a few different parties have recently spoke out claiming that they have exclusive rights to the continuation of the Sound of Freedom story, or the sequel. The movie is definitely going to get a sequel in due time. Any movie that brings in over a 1,000% return in profitability is going to get another movie. But the question is, who is going to make that movie? And this is where the Sound of Freedom story gets a little complicated. According to Variety, a representative for producer Mike Illich Jr. claimed that her client signed a deal with Tim Ballard, the anti-human transportation activist who is the subject of the breakout film Sound of Freedom, for exclusive life rights, and that the pair recently began developing a follow-up. Illich Jr., the son of Mike Illich, billionaire owner of Little Caesars Pizza, wasn't going to stop there. He also planned a scripted series and a docu-series about Ballard's various missions rescuing children around the world from transportation. There were also plans in place to leverage unnamed Tim Ballard nonprofit and other non-governmental organizations to provide real help around the world against transportation. The intention was to make this much more about just creating another movie. However, in the most recent update, the rep for Illich Jr. said the information was not accurate and did not provide any further details. So that's the Sound of Freedom story with Mike Illich Jr. So who else claims to have rights to the Sound of Freedom sequel? Sound of Freedom director Alejandro Monteverde told Variety that he secured Tim Ballard's life rights while researching the film during the script writing stage sometime around 2015. He acknowledged that talks of a sequel are taking place and that the setting of the sequel will move the Sound of Freedom story from Colombia to Haiti. Monteverde recently commented that there's definitely a lot of interest in exploring the subject a little deeper because this is just the tip of the iceberg. However, a spokesperson for Monteverde later said that his client's rights only covered one movie. The rep added, in regards to the sequel, there have been discussions, but there is nothing additional to report at this time. At this point, the most likely scenario is that Angel Studios, the distributor for Sound of Freedom, holds the rights to the Sound of Freedom title and could pursue a spinoff with a different protagonist than Tim Ballard. This will certainly not be the best option for the continuation of the story, as it would not be able to include Jim Caviezel, who played Agent Tim Ballard in the Sound of Freedom film. Also, Tim Ballard's personal connection to the material as a former U.S. Department of Homeland Security agent seems essential to any further exploration of the story. In essence, this would just be continuing the Sound of Freedom franchise in name only. Attorneys who specialize in intellectual property have begun to weigh in on the chaos surrounding a sequel to the film, and they pretty much all agree that this case is both messy and somewhat unique. Lisa Califf of the Donaldson Califf Perez law firm said, This is unusual because if it was a big studio, the studio would have locked up all of the rights and Tim Ballard wouldn't have the opportunity to go and enter into an agreement with someone else. I do understand why it happened because they probably were hoping to make this one movie and had no idea it would be as successful as it is, and now they're in this predicament. Variety reports that the various parties claiming to have rights for the sequel may come together and reunite the team behind the breakout Sound of Freedom film, saying that Mike Illich Jr.'s rep initially said the full producing team, talent, and distribution deals are being finalized but added. It might be some time. Sound of Freedom pulled in more money domestically than Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Those tentpole films were made for just under $300 million each, while Sound of Freedom's budget was a mere $14 million. What do you think about this battle for the rights to make a Sound of Freedom sequel? What would you like to see happen? And most importantly, what movie would you support? Thank you for being here at Coach's Archives. If you like this video, be sure to go and see our other non-Sound of Freedom content. I pray that the good Lord rains blessings down on you and yours and draws you nearer to Him in Jesus' name. Amen.